Okay, welcome to the New Jersey Globe State Jersey debate between the candidates for the Republican nomination for state Senate in the 4th District, uh, former Washington Township Councilman Chris Del Borello and Gloucester County Commissioner Nick DeSilvio. Uh, voters in this district have been voting for about two weeks now. Uh, so I, I, I thank both candidates for coming on uh, to join us in this forum. I'm David Wildstein, the editor of the New Jersey Globe. Matt Rooney, the editor of Save Jersey, is joining me tonight. Uh, we will together moderate this important debate to select a, a nominee in one of New Jersey's most competitive legislative districts. Uh, the candidates, and I'll just run through this very quickly, the candidates have received the rules in advance. Matt and I have prepared the questions. We did not share them in advance. Uh, we'll start with a 90-second opening statement. Uh, Matt and I are going to alternate questions. 60 seconds for a, uh, a response and 60 seconds for a rebuttal. Uh, I will respectfully ask the candidates to stick to their allotted time. Uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a warning if you're going on too long, just, just raising my hand. It's a signal to wrap it up. If, if you do go over, I'll, I'll raise my hand again. And if, if that doesn't work, then I'll interrupt. But uh, as I always say, we, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So uh, we hope that you'll you will keep within those time slots. Uh, the other thing to, to say, uh, and, and I say this in every debate, is that my role and Matt's role is that of being a moderator. Uh, we're not here to offer our own opinions. We're not part of your debate. Uh, uh, and so we're going to moderate and we'll look to each of you to make sure that what your opponent says is, is fact-based. Uh, uh, if you have something that you want to add, if you've been attacked, we'll give you some extra time. Uh, we conducted a, a coin toss before the start of this debate, uh, and uh, Commissioner Silvio won. He uh, he elected uh, to go second in the opening and second in the closing. So, uh, Councilman Del Borello, we'll start with your, your opening statement. Thank you, David. Um, good evening, everyone. First, thank you to New Jersey Globe and Save Jersey for sponsoring and moderating this debate. Thank you to the Republican voters of the 4th Legislative District for tuning in and participating in this democracy. And thank you to Commissioner DeSilvio for agreeing to join with me tonight. My name is Chris Del Borello, and I'm running for state senator because New Jersey is unaffordable, is unsafe, and the path we are on is unsustainable. As an entrepreneur and chief compliance officer for my family's business, I know what it takes to balance a budget, to make payroll, to create jobs, and I know what the state can do to make it easier for businesses to grow and succeed in our state. As a former Washington Township Councilman, I took on the Norcross Democrat machine and won. We beat the entrenched Democrats at the polls and then ushered in conservative fiscal reforms that made local government more efficient, more transparent, and responsive to residents. I'm proud to be running with U.S. Navy Reserve veteran and former Buna Borough Councilman Matt Walker and Pittman Middle School teacher Amanda Esposito. Together, we will pursue a conservative agenda that is pro-taxpayer, that is pro-parent, pro-police, and pro-smart growth. And better than that, we will be the conservative fighters our Republican Party needs to take on Phil Murphy and the radical left that is destroying our state. Thank you, and I look forward to a spirited debate. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> good evening, good evening, everyone. Um, except to my liberal opponent, Chris, defund the police, Del Borello. Thank you, David and Matt, for hosting us and giving me the platform to discuss my conservative values and expose what a fraud Chris is. I'm running for Senate for all the right reasons. First, I'm fighting for my family and every South Jersey family like it. I got into public service to make a difference for my daughter. I knew I could make a difference for the special needs community, and I see a path to keep fighting to accomplish that in the state Senate. Second, I'm a patriot. I served my country in the Navy, and I feel the call to serve again, this time in the legislature. Liberal politicians, like the ones who are cheering on Chris, defund the police, Del Borello tonight, are taking our nation, our state, and South Jersey in the wrong direction. Third, I'm a conservative. 
I believe the way to fix our broken system is through principled conservative values. We need rock rib real Republicans in Trenton who will stop the out of control spending, support our police and stand up to work political insiders. Chris, defund the police Del Borello has already been on the wrong side of all these issues. And finally, because I'm battle tested and a proven winner, I won a tough race in New Jersey's most competitive county for commissioner, and I will win in November. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This first question is for Councilman Del Borello. Councilman, under Democrat leadership, Trenton has increased spending 53% over the last six years. Phil Murphy's latest budget proposal is up $18 billion over Chris Christie's final budget. Spending is undeniably out of control, and many of your voters believe it's time for drastic measures. Can you name one specific state department or agency which, if Republicans had the ability to do so, you would support eliminating immediately? Thanks, Matt. Thanks for the question. Um, look, you can't take a full, uh, you have to take a full approach to this topic. You know, as you said, 53% spending increase over the last five years from Chris Christie's budget. Um, that's unsustainable. So day one, we have to look at the budget. Uh, my record in Washington Township speaks for itself. We flattened the line on the tax levy um, and we looked at everything. Uh, Mayor Moriarty, uh, the Democrat who I will be going up against in November, if I'm lucky enough to voters to vote me through June 6th, he, he did so much spending that he had to create a special uh, shed tax. I came in with my running mates. We killed the shed tax. We got rid of it. Open space. We talked to the Open Space Committee. We talked to the Environmental Board. We had a million dollar sur surplus in the Open Space Fund, and we weren't buying any more properties. So we got that. We flattened the line, and I'm happy to say that we controlled the line on taxes, and that's what I'll take with, to, with me to Trenton. Thank you. Before we move to Commissioner DeSilvio, though, do you have one department or agency that you would cut or support cutting? Yeah, we, we have to look at everything. As I said before, Everything's on the, on the table. Nothing would be off the table if I was up there. Commissioner DeSilvio? I, right now, I can't pinpoint a specific department. But what I can tell you is my record is solid with spending. Um, I saved the taxpayers of Franklin while I was on the Board of Education a half a million dollars over a course of six years. And uh, the past two years... Uh, we forced a 0% tax increase, even though uh, me and my running mate were in the minority. So we have, I have a proven record of uh, cut and spending, saving money, but, but uh, keeping everything else intact. Um, while on the other hand, um, my opponent, Mr. Del Borello, he, um, he voted to raise taxes multiple times and said he was even proud to do so while he was on council. Um, let me just respond to that because I was personally attacked there. Um, that's not true. That's very inaccurate. Um, Commissioner Silvio was not on council 15 years ago. He has no idea what he's talking about. I didn't vote for multiple tax increases. I, in fact, I killed taxes and I cut taxes. Anybody you ask in Washington Township would say the same thing. And that's why my brother won in a landslide last year and got back on council for Peter Delbarella. So that's inaccurate. But I will tell you what's accurate. This whole half a million dollars that um, Commissioner DeSilvio is talking about on the school board, he actually raised taxes four times in a row. Four years in a row, he batted a 1,000. Now, in baseball, that's a great record. You know, you're batting a 1,000. You get a hit every time. But in politics, that's really bad. Four Four times in a row on school board, 20% tax increase. That's his record. <laughs> there you Thank go again. Do I get do I get to respond to that? Since we're mentioned, you can you can briefly respond. Okay. Everything that I've said just now can be proven. It's called reading the minutes. Okay. Um, everything that I've I've done, I've accomplished on the board. I've saved a half a million dollars over the course of six years. You could just read the budgets and read the minutes, okay? When I tell you that uh, Mr. Del Borello raised taxes and he said he was proud to do so, 
He said it in an article. So I don't understand where he's coming up with this uh, nonsense that he said that he, he didn't do it. Like he was quoted in an article. So, you know, that's my defense. Uh, and, you know, I'm sticking with it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for Commissioner DeSilvio. Year in and year out, we heard the Republicans build their state campaign. I can't hear you. Yes? You sounded muffled for a minute. Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? David, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'll start. So, Commissioner, New Jersey Republicans year in and year out build their state campaigns around the promise of cutting or at least reigning in taxes. But despite having the nation's worst tax climate, New Jersey Republicans haven't won a legislative cycle in over two decades now. And their record in statewide contests for single offices isn't much better. So what, if anything, do you believe is wrong with the NJGOP's tax messaging? And should you become the Republican nominee in LD4 in just about a month's time? What, if anything, would you do differently on the campaign trail? I, I don't think there's anything wrong with their messaging. I mean, a conservative is a conservative. You know, um, they want to cut taxes. They want to they want to control spending. Um, if I had the opportunity and to uh, to serve you as a, a state senator, I would start with the school funding formula. Um, right now, it's ridiculous. Um, that would be. As far as I as far as I can see, that would be an immediate impact to property taxes if we equalize the, the school funding formula, because there's really no reason why Lindenwald uh, pays twenty thousand dollars per student, but yet uh, in in state tuition uh, for colleges or uh, is around eighteen thousand dollars on average. So that is utterly ridiculous. So that that's that's what that's what I would attack first. Okay, thank you, Councilman Del Varello. Yeah, so thanks for the question. Um, listen, it, sometimes it comes down to gerrymandered lines where, frankly, Republicans have the right message, but they're in a blue district and it's very difficult to win. You know, that we, we were um, fortunate enough to have the LD4 in the last redraw map uh, to go purple instead of solid blue. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it. But on this other issue, why do Republicans not win in New Jersey? It's because you have Republicans like Nick DeSilvio, who, despite saying they're not going to raise taxes, they do it four years in a row on school board. And despite getting to the commissioner board and, you know, being put there by the people to be a, a, a stop against the Norcross Democrats, he rubber stamps their budget. Um, so th that's an issue. And then the other issue with Mr. DeSilvio is that, he has denigrated every po segment of the population that you could possibly think of and is unelectable in November, which the Democrats know, which they are why are they are funding his campaign. He's talked about people of Arab descent. He's talked about Catholics. He's talked about building and trades, disavowing buildings and trades, union members and non-union members alike. He's talked about young women calling them evil and, and murderers if they have to get abortion. So when you have this kind of rhetoric from a candidate like that, that's why Republicans can't win. Commissioner, you were mentioned if you want to respond. <laughs> that's what he considers it. It's rhetoric because that's all it is. None of none of what he said can be proven. But what I can prove is that uh, Mr. Del Borello um, is the actual person receiving money from the Democrats. OK, he his campaign is being funded by Stronger Foundations, OK, which is a well-known Democratic PAC that supported Hillary Clinton and supports Phil Murphy. And, you know, he's being, he's, he was saying that I'm being uh, funded by the Democrats now. Um, he's also, it's proven fact that he's defunded the police. Okay. Um, that's on video. And he's also, uh, it's also proven that he runs a morally bankrupt business. Okay. That rented strippers and facilitated fraud. So, all of this can be proven, okay? Anything that he says about me is conjecture. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Deborello, uh, we all hope that this will be a substantive uh, debate and a substantive campaign, but it's clear 
that a big part of this conversation is about personalities. And it, so it's reasonable for there to be a discussion uh, from both sides about the electability of the Republican nominee. Uh, uh, I've seen things on social media about your family business. And frankly, uh, it makes me blush. It includes uh, an entertainment company that Politico described as strippers and leprechauns. Uh, someone involved in your check cashing company went to prison for money laundering. Uh, what exactly is your involvement in your, in, in your company and what has been said about you uh, that is accurate and inaccurate? Yeah, so everything that Nick DeSilvio is putting out from his consultants and his handlers, um, he should be ashamed of himself because he knows 100% what he's saying is not true. And he should apologize to my family for going this route. But I'm not surprised that he uses this tactic, the same Norcross Democrat tactic that they've used for the last 15 years against me and my family because we threatened their power. Uh, listen, when that company was started, I was it was 2002. I was in high school. I was in Mr. Gallagher's chemistry class. I was more worried about if there was pizza, that pizza Friday at the cafeteria. He knows that. He doesn't care about the truth. He just wants to do a smear campaign against me and my family. As far as my, as far as my half brother is concerned, yes, he did get ro go rogue. Um, I was in um, a physician assistant school at the time. I was uh, in Drexel University program, one of the top ten physician assistant programs in the country. My father and my brother called me. They said we had a problem with my half brother. They asked me to leave my career in medicine. I chose to leave my career in medicine to come and help my family in my time of need. I will not apologize for that. I turned around our compliance department. I turned around our product line and we became an award winning organization. And that's what I'll do in Trenton because I fixed it in the private sector. I can fix it in Trenton. Mr. DeSilvio will just be a rubber stamp for the Trenton Democrats because that's what he's done at Gloucester County. Just rubber stamp their budget that defunded the police $681,000, the Sheriff's Department and the Department of Corrections. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, first of all, uh, Tasteful Temptations is the name of that stripper establishment um, that was in, in business in 2012 when he was on the council. Okay. Um, Mr. Del Borello has been um, quoted in, the, in a political article saying that um, he wasn't part of the Tasteful Temptations. It was his brother. So now he's throwing his brother under the bus. And his brother is a Washington Township Councilman right now. Okay. And then his other brother, his half brother, was indicted. And, and um, he was um, money laundering and embezzling. For uh, four years, are you are you are you going to tell me that you you were involved in this business and you had no idea as as the chief compliance officer and you had no idea that any of this was going on? And then he's trying to tell me that I should know better. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know about it. Honestly, I didn't know about it. So until it was brought to my attention. All right, and I'm not going to address the the, the um the. Uh, defunding the police thing because he knows he's guilty of defunding the police i have i have an endorsement from the sheriff okay do you have an endorsement from your chief of police that you defunded okay mr huh? well, yeah. please respond to that uh, yeah, obviously, uh, Mr. Silvia is a little upset right now, so I'll give him a chance to calm down. But listen, Nick, I know you don't, I know you wanted to concoct this story about defunding the police because that's what you did. So of course in political in politics for everybody watching, it's called a bait and switch. You accuse your opponent of something you did yourself. OK, so he had he's been on uh, commissioner for 12 months. And in that 12 months, he's been rubber stamping two Democrat budgets that defunded the sheriff's department, our first Republican elected sheriff in over 30 years. And he chooses as the first order of business to cut his funding $681,000. And even Sheriff Stammen said, what are you doing? Why would you do that to me? Okay, thank you. Let me There's zero proof of that. Okay. It's in the budget, Nick. It's in the budget. 2023 Simons, budget. Simons endorsed me. Okay. Sheriff Simons endorsed me. All right. Why don't you ask Sheriff Simons? 
Okay. Let me let me move on. Uh, that easy. Not a lot to cover. Uh, Commissioner, I want to ask, ask you a question. Uh, uh, there, there are people in your party uh, who view some of your social media posts as as extreme, including one which has now been removed that said, I believe in Jesus, no Muslims here. Uh, you're running in a district that Republicans haven't won in 22 years. Uh, what's your strategy to explain your social media history to to moderates, to conservative Democrats that you're going to need to win in November? You mean based off the social media posts? I'm, I'm, I'm confused about the question. All right. So the question is, is you have you have a history of uh, posting uh, and, and retweeting or, or, or liking on Facebook or or reposting on Facebook uh, tweets that some people in your or, or, or social media posts that some people in your party, they say it's it's extreme. They, they talk about uh, Muslims, about women. Uh, uh, some of this isn't there anymore. Some of this was documented, uh, but it's now been removed. So how are you going to explain that? Well, I can explain it right now by saying that I don't support any of that, any of those issues. All right. Um, I don't hate anybody. I don't hate Muslims. I love everybody. So I don't, um, as far as the social media posts being uh, extreme, I, I would like to see proof of that. Okay. Well, I, I have the proof right here, Nick. It's uh, right in the mailer that they attacked three separate Republicans with last year. Okay. They're saying you, you think it's never medically necessary to, it, to, for the life of a mother. It's not even science. Well, that's, that was a lie. That was a lie. No, no, no. Hold up. It's my time to talk. It's my time no, to talk. No, it's not. Yeah, yes, it is. It's still it's my not. half a minute. No, Commissioner, let's let Mr. Del Barello answer. It's his yeah. time to respond, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. Yeah. The fact of the matter is you did like social posts that said that, that you didn't want Arabs living next to, next to you. You did support uh, uh, calling women evil and murderers on your Facebook page. You, you and your running mate, Michael Clark, support a man that says Catholics are in the bondage of their own sin, and they don't get, they don't get the gospel. Um, so with alienated all of those segments of population – how in the world could you win a November election? It's, 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 it's impossible. You, you, the only reason you won two years ago was because nobody knew about your Facebook post then, and you wrote the coattails of Jack Cittarelli. I mean, let's face it. You wrote the coattails of Jack Cittarelli, and then you turned it back on him, so you have no support from him. Mm -hmm. you, just have, you have alienated every segment of the population, and it's, it's, you need to apologize to all these people, frankly. Let's go back to Commissioner DeSilvia. First of all, I don't really need to apologize to you for anything. No, to the um, people. No, but I can honestly tell you that uh, 50,000 people elected me in a Democratic district, okay? Jack Cittarelli lost, and I won in Gloucester County, all right? Um, as far as the social media posts are concerned, and that, 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 that flyer that you, you showed me just now, okay? That's called, um, I guess, acceptable slander because you're allowed to use that in politics. You can actually lie and use it, all right? That flyer also says that I am a, a satanic cannibal, okay? So um, that would be something interesting for my preacher to know as well, that I'm, that I'm a satanic cannibal, my pastor. Yeah. So, you know, I don't believe any of that flyers, the flyers... They're, they're just, it's all, it's all bogus. So all your flyers you're currently sending in a smear campaign are bogus as well then, I guess. That's no, bad. because they're all proven. Right. They're all proven. Right. You right. have a, you have and, a video and, out. And, and at this, and it's all proven right. by, it's all proven by um, this is, this is articles, not, newspaper articles and videos that you came out, the words came out of your mouth. This is not factual. First right. of all, Jack Cittarelli won Gloucester County by 10,000 votes. That's the facts. So you're you're misrepresenting his vote total. He won by 10,000 votes. You wrote his coattails. And now you, you made our three candidates last year lose because of your comments. All right. So let's what, let's move on. because What was my which comments that I did I make them? Lose? All right. All right, gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. No, we're not. The next question. And I'm sure there'll be plenty more time for more back and forth. 
this next question is directed to Councilman Del Varello. Yes. New Jersey uh, just celebrated its one-year anniversary of its experiment with legal recreational marijuana. Last spring, shortly after legal weed sales began in the Garden State, Senate President, Democrat, Nicholas Scatari introduced legislation to legalize magic mushrooms. Some states have gone further. Where do you believe our state government should draw the line, if at all, in the realm of regulating an adult's ability to possess and use drugs? Has New Jersey already gone too far? Has it achieved the right balance? Or does liberty demand, as some libertarians and liberals on opposite sides of the divide, they believe that we should still go further? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, look, you know, when I when they first legalized marijuana, I, fir I said to people at the time that it's a tax grab. And little and behold, a couple years into it in Colorado and states like Washington, the mar mar marijuana industry is finding it hard to survive with the heavy tax burden that they place on on the marijuana. In fact, there's been a lot of um, stocks that have gone down in medical and cannabis and, and things of that nature. So the taxation on the medical and uh, recreational marijuana has been totally constricted the, the industry. As far as libertarian ideals, and look, we're the party of, of individualism. And so, you know, on certain issues, uh, we have to be, we have to people, let people live their lives. Um, does that mean we need to um, legalize every single drug? No, we have to find common ground with people and stakeholders that are involved in this issue. Commissioner DeSilvio? This issue is a little bit uh, personal with me because my, uh, my, my special needs daughter is on medical marijuana right now. So I think that I am for medical marijuana. I think that recreational marijuana is okay if it's regulated properly. And, um, and that's how I feel about it. Okay, just maybe briefly to ask both candidates directly, would you support legalizing ma magic mushrooms as they're called, psychedelic mushrooms or any other drug besides marijuana? Councilman Del Barello. No, I would not be for that. Commissioner? No, I will not be for that either. Thank you. Now, let's move on to another question that's going to be directed first to Commissioner DeSilvio. Back in April, the state of Montana became the first in the U.S. to initiate a state ban on TikTok. Trenton has already banned the controversial app on many state devices, but thus far, has not pursued a broader ban, although Governor Murphy has indicated that he has an open mind given ongoing concerns about the application. Would you support a statewide ban on TikTok? Um, that's a good question. Thank you for that question. Um, TikTok is very popular amongst the young, uh, young crowd right now. And uh, I find it interesting sometimes too to watch. Um, but I've, I've heard that it has ties to the uh, Chinese Communistic Party. Um, just that's just a rumor I hear. So if that is the case, then I would I would I guess I would be for a state ban. Uh, maybe TikTok can get uh, can get bought out by an American company and, and we can make the uh, we can make the profit off of it. Consider it a revenue. Councilman Del Barello. Yeah, well, I, I totally wholeheartedly agree with the ban for government employees. Um, you know, we shouldn't have government employees on TikTok uh, while they're, you know, whatever sensitive information that they're working on at the time. As far as social media in general, I am not a big social media guy. Um, and so I really think we need to step back as a society as whole and study the effects of this social media uh, um on our children. And there's very clear correlations about the, the number of suicides, the number of um, pol polarization between the two parties, the far left and the far right, um, and, and the rise of social media corresponding with that. I think we need to step back as a society and really, really study the effects of social media, especially on our children. 
Thank you. Uh, Councilman Delborel, I'll, I'll start with you on this question. Uh, you and Commissioner DeSilvio are both pro-life. Uh, what I'd like to know is, is a specific number, the number of weeks into a pregnancy uh, where you would support a ban on abortion. And, and the governor of Florida signed a six-week ban. Senator Durr's bill is at 12 weeks. Uh, uh, Congressman Chris Smith has proposed a national ban of 15 weeks. Congressman Kane campaign last year on 20 weeks. So what I'm looking for, for councilman, is a number, uh, the number of weeks, uh, whether, you know, whether it's zero or up till uh, delivery that you would feel comfortable banning abortion? Look, what, I, what I'll say is definitely um, what you said. Um, you know, I'm Roman Catholic, so I am uh, personally pro-life with minimal exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. Um, I think the Trenton Democrats have gotten this issue wrong. They've gone too far left. Um, you know, they have no limit whatsoever up into, through the ninth month. Um, they do not require parental um, consent for uh, women under 18 years old. So I think that's outside the mainstream of what Americans uh, uh, are saying in the studies when we study this. Um, but at the same time, I think Nick DeSilvio goes too far. I mean, he said that it's never medically necessary to save the life of a mother. I'm offended by that. I have a, a wife that's an LMD nurse, labor and delivery. Um, she sees a lot of things that threaten the life of a mother. Um, and he also said that if you happen to have an abortion, that you're evil and you're a murderer. My take is if you happen to have an abortion, come, come sit down with me. Let's have some counseling. Let's have some therapy. Because you're going to need it when those those things come up and 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 you find yourself in that position. I want to bring people together, not divide us. And Councilman, before we go to Mr. De Silvio, Commissioner De Silvio, uh, I, I'm still looking for a number. If you if you you have one, the number of weeks uh, where you would would say, uh, since this is the government's role, since since this is uh, this is state government's role, and if the bill came before you, what's your number? Yeah, I mean, look, the the eight week number that some are proposing. I mean, some people don't even know they're pregnant until the fourth or fifth week. So um, those 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 kind of numbers are 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 just frankly not reasonable. Um, and so, yeah, we need something in the fifteen week range. Okay, uh, Commissioner Silvio, it's the same question. On I'm seeking a number from you. <clears throat> I would say I would say wow. Um, I guess a heartbeat starts at four weeks. So four to six weeks is my number, if you're asking for a number. And I also like to address the fact that um, uh, Mr. Del Borello brought up the fact that, um, that I said that um, abortion is never medically necessary. That is incorrect. That never came out of my mouth. So I don't know where he's getting his information from, but that's not true. But let, let me just be clear about this. I am a pro-life candidate. Um, I do I do believe that in certain uh, there's certain exceptions with rape, incest, and the life of the mother, where you you know you that uh, abortion could be um, you can have an abortion at that point. Um, but I do believe that the act itself is a decision between the mother, um, her doctor, and her God, and that's what I'll say. Thanks. Yeah, and, and just to correct Mr. Uh, De Silvio, uh, he never verbally said it. You're right, Nick. You tweeted it out. That no, I never tweeted it. Yes, you, know, yes, you did. No. You tweeted it out. It's there for everybody to see it. He scrubbed it, but it was there. It was never medically necessary. Then he gave a report to a reporter, yeah, flip flopping. And so, yes, we have a flip flopper here too, as in Mr. De Silvio's case. Thank you. And, and uh, Commissioner De Silvio, this next question is for you. Uh, the Florida legislature has passed a bill that would allow the state to take transgender minors away from their families if they're receiving gender affirming care. Uh, if that bill were to be voted on in the New Jersey State Senate and you were a senator, would you support a bill like that? For transgender children to be taken away from their parents? Yes, that's the bill that Florida passed. Mm. <clears throat> um. I don't know anything about that bill. I'd have to read up on it. But my first thought is no. Um, 
They belong, children belong with their parents. You know, that's where they find all the love. So I would, I would not, I would not agree with that. Thank you. And Councilman Deborah, Deborah, the same question. Would you, would you vote for this bill that was passed in Florida? No, I would not vote for that. But let me just say this. I do not believe at all that we should be pumping our children with hormone blocking drugs um, as, as, as early as some people are doing. And um, I think we should allow our children to grow and expand and, and be nurtured in, in a loving environment. Um, but as far as pumping our children with hormone um, blocking uh, drugs. I am not for that. I think that decision should be left to the child as they grow 18, 21, and, and can choose for them themselves once they're fully developed. Thank you. And so this is the point in the debate where, uh, where each candidate will, will ask a question of their opponent. Uh, I think we, we may have arguably already had these moments in this debate, but those are the rules that we agreed to. So we'll go back to it. So uh, Commissioner DeSilvio, uh, I'll ask you ask a, a brief question of your opponent. <clears throat> yeah, first I'd like to say um, you've said you were proud to raise taxes in the past. Um, you're backed by special special interests that support Hillary Clinton and Phil Murphy and higher taxes. My question to you is, <clears throat> do you support the gas tax too? Yeah, so here's here's the situation, which um, Nick DeSilvio is playing the typical politician's game where we divide everybody up and, and conquer. And I will not participate in that game. I will not turn my back on people. Um, his own union uh, doesn't support him. What does that tell you about Mr. DeSilvio? His own union, his running mate, Denise Gonzalez's union, there's the same union, 351, electrician union, they are not supporting them. So um, to divide people is just is just hypocrisy. And look, Nick, politicians raided the transportation trust fund. Elections have consequences. And instead of blaming everybody else, blame the politicians, the governors that have been raiding the TTF for 30 years and it went bankrupt. And it's other politicians like me that have to clean up that mess. And and I had to do it as a councilman from 2010 to 2014. My tax record speaks for itself. Washington Township residents were happy with us. And that's why they voted my brother again in a landslide. In a year where you lost last year, my brother was voted in in a landslide. Thank you. And Commissioner, I'll give you a, a chance to respond to that. Um, he never answered my question. That was a lot of lot of um, bull, bull crap coming out of his mouth, but no, he didn't ever answer the question. Do you support the gas tax too? The gas tax is statutorily formulated, Nick. You don't know what you support it, Nick. It's statutory. It's right by statutory. You don't know what you're talking about. It's formulated right. every year by the Treasury for the next three years. All right, I think we've we've gotten. Are you in me, support of it? Let me go. Let's go to uh, Councilman Deborello. It's your chance to ask a question of uh, Commissioner De Silva. De Silvio. Thank you, Commissioner De Silvio. Two years ago, you were elected to stand up to the Norcross Sweeney Democrat machine and fight for Gloucester County taxpayers. Instead, you rubber stamped two Democrat budgets that kept our property taxes the highest in any county in South Jersey, and slashed spending for our own Republican sheriff and the Corrections Department siding with county Democrats to defund the police. Will you admit tonight that you voted for two Democrat budgets? Given that, explain why any Republican should trust you to fight uh, against Phil Murphy and the radical left in Trenton when you've proven you can't do it here in Gloucester County. You obviously cannot read a budget, obviously. Um, me, there was there's two Republicans on that commissioner board, two five Democrats, okay? Getting anything passed through there is a miracle in itself. And we forced a 0% tax increase this year, okay? That's the first time it's been done in 15 years in Gloucester County, a 0% tax increase. So I really have no idea what you're talking about, all right? You, you like to babble on and talk out the side of your head, but it's a 0% tax increase. 
So, so, you, think the, so you think the status quo is normal? So you want everybody it's to not, make the largest, it wasn't the largest status quo. taxes in the county. It wasn't the status quo. We have the largest tax base in the, in the county in Gloucester, and you thought the status quo was normal. Just vote with the, dubber, the, the Democrats. Just vote rubber stamp. And so it was a zero percent. Zero percent tax increase. You, you zero percent. We got to turn this down. The sheriff. We've got to we've got to lower lower the temperature a little bit. Uh, Mr. Dubrell, you've asked two questions. Zero percent tax increase. I don't see how that's so hard to understand. You cut the sheriff department six hundred eighty-one thousand. That is a lie. It's not a lie. Yeah, it is. I read the budget in twenty twenty-three. Yeah, I will. I've read it. I went over it. I, I don't think it. That. I know, dude. I know. Okay. Yeah. All right, and I I'll tell you what. The sheriff was okay with that. We cut the capital. Oh, so we now you did cut it. No, oh, so now you did cut the sheriff. Okay, all right, now so we got the truth. We slight cut the capital, but we didn't lose jobs like we lost in Washington Township when they wanted 10 officers and you only approved two. Now it's you put true. the safety of Washington Township in jeopardy. Not true. It's Don't not give true. me any crap, dude. <laughs> okay. That was well, if anybody wants this representing them in Trenton, I, I don't know. That, that is what these debates are for, is for an uh, interactive exchange. And, and we'll, let's, uh, we have a lot more. Let's go back to Matt Rooney. Uh, uh, maybe there'll be some more mushroom questions because that does seem to pull the temperature down on everybody here. So, so Matt, we'll go to you for the next two. That was my intended effect, David. Mission accomplished. We're going to start with Councilman Del Borello on this, this next question. Um, of all the contentious issues in this particular primary, and there have been many, one of them is the very process itself what, through which a nominee is chosen. Um, uncoincidentally, there is currently a pending federal court case which could spell the end of the fabled county line, New Jersey's unique system of awarding preferential ballot placement to party organization back home. Activists, on the one hand, allege that lines inhibit democracy and shore up political machines. Proponents of lines, on the other hand, counter that strong party, party organizations are actually good for our republic's political process. My question for you is simply who's correct? Yeah, I support county lines. I mean, look, this was um, uh, a, pro a process, um, but... I support county lines with counties that have conventions where delegates can actually vote, which is what happened in Atlantic County. Uh, that did not, unfortunately, happen in Gloucester County. Uh, the chairwoman just appointed uh, three people as, as the county line with no say whatsoever from anybody in the county, no delegates, no county committee people. And so when you have that type of process, yeah, I'm against that. Uh, but when you have a convention where the, the, the candidates can go to the floor and make their case, um, then the county line stands with those delegates voting for the county line. Commissioner DeSilvio? Are you talking about the Atlantic County Convention where they voted on a girl who wasn't even there as one of your running mates? That convention? I'm for... Um, let, let, me just, let me just briefly say this. Um, Gloucester County and Camden County, they had... Um, they had uh, an open, um, I guess you could say, uh, an open time period where you're, you were allowed to submit your letters of interest and resumes, okay? Um, the deadline was originally like December 6th, but, you know, they were expanded to like the beginning of February, okay? They were properly vetted. Um, we were interviewed, and the, the county chairs picked the candidate, Okay. Now, whatever process is in place, I will adhere to, okay? I didn't just decide to enter the race after, after the vetting process was done. That does nothing but split the party up and allows the Democrats to win. This is the reason why we have that vetting process in place, okay? So that's all I have to say. If there's a convention or a line, whoever picks the line, I'm, I'm, I'll adhere to any, anything that they have to say, okay? I'll, I'll adhere to any procedure that they have. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, let me just add, Matt, real quick, though. Sure, go the ahead. Process, the, the process was, uh, uh, you know, this this December 1st, and then it was pushed back to February 5th or whatever he's talking about. Um, but the fact of the matter is his running mate, Michael Clark, was anointed by Rizzo back in October of last year that he would be the next assemblyman from LD4. So don't let Commissioner DeSilvio fool everybody into thinking there was a process. The process was Denise Gonzalez, his other running mate, has been running and has been demanding to run again for the last three years. Michael Clark was anointed by Rizzo to run, and, and Nick DeSilvio uh, is going to help Jackie Vigilante get a judgeship, so that's why he was picked. <laughs> there you go again. You know, this guy just makes up lies. I mean, I'm, I'm helping this Jackie Vigilante to get a judgeship. Uh, that's a new one. You know, that's a that's a new one. And he can't even look at me. Look, he's looking down at his paper. Look, he decided to enter the race. OK, because because of his 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 uh, his his I guess you could talk, say adopted father and master Don Purdy asked him to run. Right. Because he didn't like he probably didn't like any of the candidates. All right. So I don't want to hear any of this crap where he's talking about. He decided to enter the race right after he found out that um, that uh, Madden was retiring. He, he thought, oh, man, man, maybe I can run for it. And then he pulled up his uh, his, ro his his robot to the establishment buddy, Don Purdy, and said, yeah, come on, man. Run, run against the Silvio. OK, thank you. And Matt, we're still with you. Thank you, David. Commissioner DeSilvio, we're going to start with you for this question. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, Governor Murphy, on his watch, turned New Jersey into a sanctuary state, where illegal aliens have access to a variety of subsidized services without fear of New Jersey authorities cooperating with federal law enforcement in most cases. Meanwhile, we've already talked about New Jersey spending problems tonight. And now many New Jersey schools are facing draconian student aid cuts, which in some districts are affecting basic school services like busing. Just last year, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signaled he'd consider challenging a 1982 federal ruling that prohibited states from refusing to pay for the public education of a child who isn't present legally in the United States. Would you support as a legislature, legislator, such a lawsuit? Um, I would have to say I would not. Um, I do believe that um, the education uh, funding needs a serious overhaul. I do believe that um, I am a pro-parent uh, candidate, and I do believe that um, we need to start funding the students instead of the system. Okay, so... Um, if that would affect the busing, I don't, I don't see how it would, but um, I, would, I, would, I would have to say that I'm against it. Thank you. Councilman? Yeah, look, um, we, we need to be pro-legal immigration and um, as a party, and, and I believe that we are. Um, we're, we're the melting pot. I'm, I'm third generation Italian-American. Um, we need to bring all the best minds uh, to our country from around the world. And we have to have an open and fair process to that. And so I think that's what's mistaken about our party. It's not we're anti-immigration we're we're pro-immigration, we're pro-legal immigration. And so, um, you know, we need everybody to come together on this issue and we need to secure our borders. And if somebody crosses illegally, um, I don't think what people understand is, and I know this from uh, my time as a chief compliance officer and fighting money laundering, is these these illegals, as they come up, every time they stop along the way, they're being, um, you know, uh, sexualized, they're being molested, they're being um you know, uh, terrorized, they're being, you know, profited off of. And so it's not a good situation um, that we have on the southern border. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Delbarrell, let me stick with you on, on this question. Uh, uh, and and, and I'm, I'm hoping, it's, it's your call, it's not mine, but I'm hoping this will be a, uh, a question for each of you where you don't mention your opponents, uh, your, your primary opponent. Uh, in all likelihood, the winner of the uh, this race will face 
Democratic Assemblyman Paul Moriarty in the general election. Uh, voters in your district, in most of your district, have elected Mr. Moriarty nine times, uh, every time by a, a relatively wide margin. Why shouldn't he be the senator? Uh, you know, there's a it's back to the gerrymandering issue we were talking about earlier. Um, so and this also gets back to coattails, which I was arguing that Commissioner De Silvio rode the coattails of Jack Cittarelli uh, when he won countywide. Um, so that's the issue at play with uh, uh, Paul Moriarty, um, he he was not well liked as a mayor of Washington Township. All his policies I undid. Um, he had years of double digit tax increases. He created new taxes because he ran out of money, shed taxes. I helped build those taxes. Um, my record as a councilman versus Paul Moriarty's record as a mayor is night and day. It couldn't be any different. And, and so he rode the coattails of Senator Madden, a very well-liked senator. Um, and, but now this year, he can't hide. Um, and so I think the voters will have a very different um, vote in November if I go against him. But we will not, we will not win if our party picks Nick DeSilvio. Commissioner? He mentions coattails a lot, but he seems to forget that, um, you know, I, he's saying that I rode the coattails of Jack Cittarelli. Um, I guess he didn't do too well when he rode the coattails of Chris Christie. The difference there is I won the commissioner race or the freeholder race. He lost. Okay. Um, and another thing I would like to mention is the, the, the question about Moriarty. Um, he's part of the gun gap grabbing three. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, uh, see him elected as senator. Um, I believe in my Second Amendment rights. Um, I fought for my country to defend the Second Amendment, unlike my opponent. And I, um, I would also like to see him. He he, he comes up with a ridiculous. Uh, Moriarty comes up with a ridiculous um, uh, bills like the. Um, uh, the senior tax freeze is, is, is really ridiculous. So Thank that you. would have to be changed. All right, let me ask you, I, I just want to ask you a quick follow-up and, and we're, we're running out of time. So we'll go to Matt Rooney next, but just quickly, uh, and, and hopefully this will be a yes or a no commissioner De Silvio. If, if Mr. Del Borello is the nominee against Paul Moriarty, will you support him? Will you campaign for him? I will support the Republican party. Thank you. And Mr. Delbarello, the same question. If if Mr. De Silvio is the nominee, will he have your support against Paul Moriarty? You know, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, he's he's run such a nasty campaign uh, against me uh, and my family uh, since day one. Uh, that would be very tough uh, uh, for the pill to swallow. Uh, but I will support De Silvio because uh, Paul Moriarty, who we should be focusing our attention on, Instead of Nick DeSilvio assassinating my character, we should be focusing on Paul Moriarty. But uh, be that as it may, he was so disastrous as a mayor. He's been so disastrous as a Trenton legislator. We need to defeat him in November. Thank you. And, and we'll get to this because we, we are running out of time. And, and I promised everybody we'd be out of here a little bit, you know, around 10 o'clock. Uh, Matt, uh, rather than me ask another question, let me go to you, Matt, for, for one more. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, David. Um, we'll start with Councilman Del Borello, and then, of course, Commissioner DeSilvio, you'll have a chance to answer as well. Uh, Councilman, Donald Trump and Chris Christie have criticized Ron DeSantis for taking on the Disney company. Um, not only its corporate welfare practices in Florida, but also some of its woke excesses. Uh, and there's been pushback, certainly. So who's right in this particular internal party struggle, Trump and Christie or Governor DeSantis? Well, look, I, I think I think we have a situation here where, again, um, like one of one of my favorite authors, British author Douglas Murray, talks about in his book, The Madness of Crowds, where we, we're becoming hyperactive. And it's a really shame that that two sides are in, in invigorating their their debate and rhetoric um, that makes us uh, hyperactive and active all the time, 24 seven. It's just not healthy. It's not good for healthy living. And so the media 
you know, drives this because they want to sell the tabloids drive this. Um, and I think in, 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 in everybody's life and just take this, uh, the voters that are watching, um, take some time to enjoy it. Um, we need our entertainment. I want to watch, uh, NFL on Sunday, uh, with my son and my daughters and root the Eagles on. And I just want to, I want a, a respite from all this chaos. Um, I want to go to a Disney movie on a Saturday night with my kids and just be entertained. And so I think that's where we got to get to back as Americans and, and, and stop all, stop all the insane rhetoric on both sides. Commissioner. Um, I think I'm with governor DeSantis on this one. Um, Disney was getting too big for its britches. They thought that they ran Florida. So I'm glad that uh, DeSantis stepped up and stopped it. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let me, let me, because we're going to go into closing statements in a second. I want to ask one, one question of both of you. Uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll be, be sort of a, uh, an answer where, uh, we're not going to go at each other, but but to give a, a thoughtful position, uh, I did a quick search this evening. Uh, I saw that the Courier Post and the South Jersey Times, formerly the, the Gloucester County Times, they haven't reported on this race at all, even though voting has been underway for two weeks. Uh, uh, Commissioner, I'll start with you. How big a problem is the local news desert in South Jersey? How are how are candidates for office expected to get voters to know who they are and what they stand for uh, in a way other than what you pay to put out, what your opponent pays to put out? And what can you do to fix that? Well, that's a good question. Um, the first thought that came to my mind was social media. Um, Facebook is free. Uh, Instagram is free and Twitter is free. Um, and believe it or not, that's a big, um, uh, I guess a big vehicle you could use to spread the, to spread the word. And, um, I hate to say it, but right now maybe, um, maybe TikTok as well. So just social media in general. Thank you. Councilman Deborah. Well, I think that's a question, uh, a bigger question in, in part of, of the media as a whole. And, um, you know, you know, and print media, especially, um, you know, it's an industry that has changed a lot over the last 20 years um, with the advent of, of you know, uh, technology. And so they're struggling to keep staff. They're struggling to keep uh, coverage in all different towns. Uh, we're in the Philadelphia market. And when you think about the Philadelphia market, about how big it is, it's the tri-state area. Um, and so I think they're in an industry where, they have to adapt and 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 find ways to, to get get covered. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess that brings us to to a close. Uh, uh, we'll start with uh, Councilman Del Borello for a uh, a ninety second opening statement. Okay, thank you. Again, I want to thank Save Jersey and New Jersey Globe for hosting this debate, and thank you to the viewers for taking time out of your busy lives and watching. You heard a lot tonight. Unfortunately, much of it from my opponents were previously debunked lies attacking my family and my family business with the same smear campaign used by the Norcross Democrat machine for the last 15 years. Not surprising from Nick DeSilvio, whose campaign is being funded by convicted felons and business partners of the Norcross machine. The truth is that voters have rejected these attacks before and they will reject them again on June 6. I am confident in that. Here's what this campaign is about. I held the line on property taxes as a councilman in Washington Township. Nick DeSilvio has a history of increasing property taxes on the school board. I fought the Norcross Democrat machine and won. Nick DeSilvio is letting them fund his campaign. I hired more cops and promoted more cops in Washington Township. Nick DeSilvio voted for a Democrat budget that defunded the Sheriff's Department and the Department of Corrections by $681,000, 5%. Above all, my running mates and I will defeat the Democrats in November and take this seat back for the first time in over two decades. While Nick DeSilvio will only guarantee another Republican loss and breathe life into a dying Norcross Democrat machine. 
On June 6th, please vote for column A in Gloucester County and Atlantic County and the column number one team in Camden County. Chris Delvarello for Senate, Matt Walker and Amanda Esposito for Assembly. Thank you. God bless you and keep you safe. And have a good night. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. <clears throat> Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, David and Matt for hosting this today. Um, I'd like to start off by saying in 2009, Chris Del Borello ran for Gloucester County Freeholder and lost. Even though Chris Christie won. In 2021, I ran for the same office and won when Jack Cittarelli lost. At the time, the Gloucester County Times called Chris unprepared to serve. He proved them right when he ran Washington Township into the ground. He was proud to raise taxes. He defunded the police and even insulted the police chief. After he was done there, he moved on to his family's shady business where a supervisor, a relative of Chris, was convicted of fraud for assisting a million dollar money laundering operation. Now he's running for Senate. You have got to be kidding me. South Jersey deserves better than a failed liberal politician. They deserve a conservative fighter like me, someone who serves his country, who serves his community, and who stops at nothing to deliver it for his friends, family, and neighbors. I'm pro-Second Amendment, pro-life, pro-parent, and pro-Trump. I'll stand up to the tax-hiking, woke political insiders who broke this system. I fought for my country, I fought for my daughter, and now I'm going to fight for you. Please vote in column B. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And thank you, Councilman. And most of all, thank you to everyone who watched this debate tonight. Many more of you will watch it in the days and, and weeks to come. And it is the earnest hope of uh, both the New Jersey Globe and SaveJersey.com that this debate helped uh, you make your decision if you're an LD4 voter and you're going to participate. And I think what David Wallace very correctly said um, is a very consequential race, one which could very much decide control of the legislature uh, in November. I want to thank Councilman uh, Christopher Del Borello and Commissioner Nick DeSilvio again. As you can see, um, it is um, harder than it appears on your screen to subject yourself to this kind of scrutiny, take the questions and um, give voters an opportunity to get an up close and personal view of who you are, what you believe. And, um, you know, it's not something that we've learned. This cycle is automatic. So we appreciate um, both of you. Can I, can I say something real quick? No, nah, I think we're done at this point, Commissioner. Well, I'd like to send um, condolences out to the Schistler family. They had, they had, they had a loss that, last night. So... Thank you. And going forward, just remember, I want to put some dates out there for everyone. Um, the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot by mail in New Jersey is coming up fast, May 30th. If you want to vote in person, you have that ability. That's between June 2nd and June 4th. And then, of course, the primary day is June 6th, whether you're voting in LD4 or elsewhere. Thank you again, everyone, for your participation tonight. Go out there and vote, and thank you again for watching. Thank you.